Good evening and welcome to Sunset News on this Sunday evening. As always, we bring you news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Aina Kweo. And I am Micheline Navatisis. In the news tonight. In an unprecedented move, the cabinet has instructed the Ministry of Labor, Industrial Relations and Employment Creation to ad advocate for paternity leave as well as for benefits for primary caregivers in the event the mother cannot take care of a newborn as a result of illness or death during labor. The Labor Ministry has also been directed with other relevant stakeholders through the tripartite task forced to review the Labor Act of 2007 to broaden the scope of compassionate leave to cover paternity leave and extend the 12-week unpaid maternity leave to 14 weeks instead. Cabinet further directed the Ministry of Labor, Industrial Relations and Employment Creation to advocate for the introduction of paternity leave in the public service and the provision for maternity leave benefits to the primary caregivers in the event that the mother of a baby is indisposed due to severe illness or passes away during labor. Cabinet has further approved the top-up payment of the difference between the basic salary of female staff members and the maternity leave benefit threshold. In the light of this, it has directed the Office of the Prime Minister and Labour Ministry to engage the Social Security Commission to speed up administration for the maternity payment directly to the government instead of the new mother. According to the cabinet resolution issued last week, the cabinet has also directed these ministries and the Social Security Commission to sign a memorandum of understanding with the finance ministry to smoothen the process of paying these benefits. What are your thoughts, Micheline? I think um, this is definitely a step in the right direction. I also heard you mentioned paternity leave. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we can also maybe look into that, it would be more um, wonderful because fathers also would really want to spend time with their newborn babies. Um, just to take a few steps back on the top up, I think that is really um, a good move, as mm -hmm. I said earlier, because um, which mother that just got a newborn baby wants to still have financial stress yes. or financial burden. So um, I think if everything is, is uh, smoother and the process is faster, um, the MOU I think will help in, in uh, just to make it um, faster the whole process with the with the payments then every everyone is happy yeah yeah then the mother does not have um stress because that directly will have an um, effect on the newborn baby one way or another i couldn't have said it any better i absolutely agree with everything that you said and i think it's just a step in the right direction for us as namibians mm -hmm. you know to support family is all you need to be a successful somebody on this in this Namibia. Now we move over to our next story. The University of Namibia has pleaded with its workers to remain patient and committed as they seek ways to meet the needs of its workers who have not received any salary increment for the last six years. In November 2018, disgruntled UNAM employees returned to work after an agreement was reached between management and the trade unions representing striking workers. According to the agreement, a one-off cash payment equivalent to 5% of seven-month basic salary would be paid to all staff within the bargaining unit on the 14th of December 2018. Workers agreed to waive a salary increase for the 2018 financial year. According to a joint statement issued by UNAM, the Namibia Public Workers Union and the Namibia National Teachers Union. Nantu's UNAM branch chairperson Rudy Kamerika said they received the memo and decided to respond to it on behalf of their members. In a memo dated Wednesday 22nd of November 2023, the Vice Chancellor Professor Kenneth Matengu told his staff that their decision to implement a salary increment over
over the years has not been taken lightly by the council and the university management. He highlighted that they are cognizant of how this situation has impacted workers and their families and that while it is painful, it is a painful situation, it is unfortunately the only option to keep the university operational and continue securing jobs for its workers. Strike, strike, strike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Salary increment is a must. Always. Always. I agree. Six years, I think, is a long time for anyone to not have seen any increment. Definitely. Mm. Um, I, I agree with you, Aina. Just now we were talking about um, financial strain, and I think this is also a huge financial financial strain, and it directly impacts the family members of these um, workers that have not. In they have not received any increment. I mean, if we just look at inflation alone mm -hmm. and the prices of food that has gone up over the past six years, that is a major difference. Yeah. So I don't think the salary can remain the same for six years. So yeah. I just hope the two parties come in agreement or the, all the parties involved come in um, agreement and we really see a change for these workers. All right. I can only also pray for a change mm. for the staff of UNAM. Moving over to our next story, the United Nations Development Programme Director for Africa, Ahona Eziakonwa, says that poverty is in Africa will remain the order of the day if its continent cannot curb the exploitation of its resources. The critical minerals that Africa has are needed to build a net zero world. We see that many overseas companies come here and exploit the minerals and that those minerals are taken at a low value. This has the result that inequality can worsen and the the problem is that we are not processing those resources here. Until we locally process our minerals rather than allowing companies to take these minerals, we will continue to we will continue to have pockets of poverty, she said. Have a look. You can start then. Okay, so no question, I just Yes, because we, we came for the event that you got invited to, so you have to brief us. Okay, so um, uh, good evening everyone. We are um, the United Nations Development uh, Program uh, covering the Africa region. Uh, we, we cover 46 countries in Africa and we have come to Namibia for the last four days uh, for our annual retreat and the annual retreat involves our senior leadership in all our country 46 country offices uh, offices and that includes our resident representatives and our deputy resident representatives but also uh, the managers who take care of our regional hubs and we also came uh, with uh, some of our senior officers from headquarters, including my deputy. Um, my name is Ahuna Isia Kongwa, and I am the UNDP Regional Bureau for Africa Director. This cluster meeting uh, comes with a theme of innovate, accelerate, and elevate really focusing on our moonshots to achieve the sustainable development goals. The UNDP has a strategic plan which runs from 2020 to 2025 with the objective of helping lift a hundred million people globally out of poverty are uh, supporting 800 million people to According to Economic News, the Cabinet approved 270k metric tons of horse mackerel TAC for the year 2024. We'll bring you this story after the break.
Welcome to My.NA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Mosta. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind the scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss My.NA Cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. The cabinet has approved a total allowable catch of 270,000 metric tons of horse mackerel by the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources during the 2024 season. The approved horse mackerel TAC for 2023 is a decline from 290,000 MT approved for the 2023 season and 330,000 MT approved for for the year 2022. Fisheries Minister Derek Klassen announced that the government plans to conduct a study during the 2024-2025 financial year to review the variation of fishing rights. The planned exercise aimed to ensure compliance, fairness and equity among right holders when altering the duration of their fishing rights. Let's have a look at our economic indicators. The Namibian dollar trades for 23 Namibian dollars 63 cents to 1 British pound, 20 Namibian dollars 54 cents to 1 euro, and 18 Namibian dollars 78 cents gets you 1 US dollar. All commodities have increased except for Brent crude oil which dropped with 1.29%. Gold increased with 0.42%, platinum 1.68% and copper 0.36%. In international news after the break, trapped workers in Indian Tunnel are anxious as drilling snag delays rescue, says a relative. We'll, be, we'll bring you this story shortly. Hello and welcome to today's Sports Rep Show. I am your host, Jesse Jackson. Kauraita. Replay Namibia, who had won the toss for the first time on this tour. Good day, everyone. Time for international sports news, starting off with tennis news, both on the WTA for women's and. In international news tonight, we start with some sad news. Concerns are growing among workers trapped in a highway tunnel in India. Hila Myers, for two weeks, a relative of one of the workers, said yesterday as rescue efforts slowed further after a drilling machinery was damaged. Sunita Hembrom, who spoke to her trapped brother-in-law, Berenda Kashuka, who is a 39, said the workers were asking how long more the rescue mission would take and if something was going to be done for them. The heavy drill machine used to break through the nearly 60 meters of debris was damaged on Friday, the 24th of November, and needs to be pulled out entirely, according to an official statement. Called an agua, the machine was damaged as it was being pulled out of the nearly 47-meter pipe inserted to bring out the trapped workers after hitting an obstacle on Friday. A senior official involved in a rescue mission told Reuters that since the damaged machine cannot be used, they are planning to cut through the remaining 10 meters of debris manually. 
what I said, development, Michelle Lim, what are your thoughts? It, I cannot imagine being trapped in this whole tunnel. It is, it is indeed, Aina. It is a catastrophic situation. Mm. I don't know what went wrong. I don't know how, um, because the last time I read about it, they were actively making progress with this um, rescue. Mm. But then, um, like you read, um, there has been a delay, a huge delay. So relatives, and I can just imagine what the relatives are feeling at this moment. Will they make it? Will they not? Mm. But let's um, be hopeful. Let's not lose hope. And, yeah. and let's hope that we hear some good news out of this. Definitely. And let us also keep them in our prayers. Of we'll course. be right back shortly. Stay with us. Take a load off and tune into another episode of Brave Namibia as we take a look at both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. Brave Namibia is broadcasted on NTV Saturdays at 6.30pm and oneup2.com as well as broadcasted on the following Facebook platforms on Wednesday at 5.30pm. Republicane, Algamina Titan, Namibian Sun and all Namibia Media Holdings pages. For more information, contact the Brave team at brave at synergy.com.na Brave Namibia for the ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. Good weather is always necessary for a brilliant day. Now let's have a look at the weather predictions for tomorrow. Katima Mulilo, Rundu can accept, uh, can expect rather a maximum of 36 degrees and 38 degrees respectively, while Tsumeb can expect a maximum of 35 degrees or Chuarongo 34 degrees. Hentis Pai can expect a minimum of 17 degrees. Swakop Mund and Falfish Pai both can expect a minimum of 16 degrees and Ludritz 18 degrees. We bring you the sports shortly after the break. Newsprint Namibia is a web offset printing operation that specializes in the printing of newspapers and commercial inserts. We are the leaders in our industry with the highest quality print work and the shortest turnaround time from computer to print and delivery anywhere in the country daily. Newsprint was established mainly as a newspaper print company but had to diversify its business to do commercial printing as required in the market. We print commercial inserts, previously printed in South Africa, in the shortest possible time. We, as an organization, also started printing workbooks for our education system and will also print textbooks for the Namibian market. For more information, please contact print at newsprint.com. Here are the sports news for tonight. The 2023 Netbank Namibia National XCM Champion races took place at the IJG Trials. Alexa Miller has once again won the 2023 Netbank Namibia National XCM Champion for the IC, sorry, for the UCI XCM elite under 23 men category he got a brilliant track record of two hours 16 minutes 31 seconds in 60 kilometers claiming the overall title and will also walk away with a much needed union cyclist international points additionally he will receive namibian national champion titles and jerseys to represent namibia in an international cycling competition vera lusa has once again won the 2023 netbank namibia national 
ex-CM champion for the UCI XCM Elite Under 23 Women category. She got a brilliant track record of 2 hours, 45 minutes, 12 seconds in 60 kilometers, claiming the overall title and will also walk away with a much-needed Union Cyclist International point. Additionally, she will receive Namibian National Champion titles and jerseys to represent Namibia in an international cycle competition. Moving over to our next story, the Richelieu Eagles yesterday scooped their third victory versus Rwanda in the T20 Africa Cricket Final at Wanderers. Namibia batted first and scored 207 runs for the loss of three wickets in 20 overs. Nico Davin blasted 80 runs while Jana Franklek um, with a 45 knockout uh, kept the Eagles scoreboard ticking. Randa lost five wickets for a mere 45 runs in 10 overs when the rain interrupted the play. Moving over to our next story, South Africa has pulled out of the contest to host the 2027 Women's World Cup, citing fears they would have to deliver a rushed presentation to FIFA during December. The deadline for submitting comprehensive plans for the tournament is 8 December and South African officials believe it will not be wiser. It was, sorry, they believe rather it will be wiser to try to host the following edition in 2031. The withdrawal of South Africa reduces the 2027 contest to three bids joined, one by Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, Mexico and the United States and one from Brazil. A FIFA Congress on the 17th of May 2024 will decide which bid succeeds and follows co-host Australia and New Zealand in staging the necessary popular four-year tournament. Well, after the break, we return with our entertainment story of the night. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past week. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. Hmm. E-Ticket, your online ticket solution for events and event marketing, bringing you ease of mind and making sure that your event gets out there. For more information, contact events at nmh.com.na. In entertainment tonight, One Economy Foundation held its annual arts show, Break Free Arts for Activism, last night at the National Arts Theatre of Namibia, where 20 talented contestants, five from each category, which are visual art, performing art, fashion design, and multimedia art, showcased their incredible creativity and talent. The winners were UCDC Dance Crew under the performing arts category Linette Musikumbili under the visual arts category Nga Goera under the fashion category and Ben Valombola and Charles Zambwe under the multimedia category. Wow, congratulations to the winners. I'm so excited. It's always good when you win something. Always. Yeah, it, it just speaks to your talent. It, it, it um, what is the word? 
it makes you more eager to Definitely. work at your passion, try and become the best version of yourself. Definitely. It's a I good motivation. True, true. <laughs> and also you get bragging rights. Yes. Mm. So I think um, this is really important and it's wonderful to see that um, um, foundations such as One Economy is coming to um, give the, the give this um, students, I believe some of them are students in, in artists too, to uh, a platform where they can you see, um, show their passion to, mm. to not just us, but to the rest of the world. And this is also just a motivating factor for, um, like College of the Arts has mentioned, the ICDS students that are part of it, to actually partake in this. If it's a yearly event, then I think mm. we'll get more numbers to participate. Yeah, and I definitely love the fact that, you know, we're using art to, uh, for activism, mm. you know, not a lot of people want to stand for something. A lot of young people, um, you know, don't have courses that they really are passionate about and yes. that they really advocate for. And so then to merge, you know, art and activism is a huge uh, step in the right direction. Definitely a smart move. And with that, we've come to the end of tonight's broadcast. Make sure you join Sunset News on Facebook, on all NMH platforms on weekdays, as well as on our website, which is called oneup2.com. Sunset News screens on DSTV channel 285 and GoTV 25 in Namibia every weekday from 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. This has been Sunset News. Please don't end your day without us. Good night. Mm -hmm.